Is it working? It's working. Howdy, Internet. <clears throat> um, I just wanted to give a quick signal boost to a friend of mine. This is completely unscripted, so it will probably go off the rails. Um, it's a gentleman who goes by Blitz on the interwebs. Um, his human name is Clint. Uh, he's a local guy, a friend of mine. He was a client first and then quickly became a friend. Uh, he throws real far, and I think he's a very talented coach. Um, we ended up doing a de facto lesson together for another friend who runs a Discord server. And um, <clears throat> Clint was, like, really polite about not stepping on my toes because I was the coach giving the lesson. But he had as much – he had significantly more – body knowledge than I do because he is a strength training coach. Um, he's also a rock climber and a very talented athlete. So when you put all those things together and add a passion for disc golf into it, like, yeah, he's going to get some stuff figured out really quick. Um, personally, I don't like his throw. I think he's doing a lot of things mechanically that aren't ideal, but it works he throws a lot farther than me. He drives a lot more consistently than me currently. And that was true months ago. Like, he, he figures stuff out real quick. And his, his method is very different than mine. He focuses on swing plane first. He doesn't get a lot of power from his hips. Um, I'll pop onto his video and show you what I think he's doing. But this is me leaning into my values. Leaning into my values, excuse me. And that like the core idea there is that I want people to have good information and all the information. And I don't want that to be dogmatically limited to what I want to teach. So I am focusing on the hip snap mechanic that comes from having a brace where you're opposing your forward momentum with a brace and creating rotation from that. Blitz doesn't really need to do that. Um, he has another way of generating power, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, but it, it works, and he's a really good coach, and he started putting up a series of videos, so I will link to the first three down below. Um, go watch them. Comment here on what you think. Comment on his videos. Um, I was just talking to him on Discord, and we both kind of feel like... Well, I won't speak for him. I feel like... I got too dogmatically stuck in my approach, which had happened before. Um, so, like, I teach bottom up and he teaches swing plane down. And I think there's a lot of value in both of those, actually. And the, the more time I spend watching his stuff, I feel like ideas that I had about how he's throwing starting are starting to click more. And it's it's getting more and more into this thing of, like, Josh from Overthrow has talked about it a little bit, that there's like there's two different ways to throw. And this this idea goes way back on this called course review and all that stuff. But there's I feel like there's a, a spectrum between a deep pocket that cracks it's not as simple as there's like two things, but there's a deep pocket, which is one way to throw, and then there's a swing. Right, so a swing like doesn't have to have a deep pocket. Garrett Gurthy kind of throws like this, where you don't get much more elbow bend than that, but the power is all out here. And then if you get a deep pocket, like the power ends up being in the same place, but like your hand is pulling off of the disc in a different way. I can't quite explain all the nuance of that yet, but I I know they feel very different, and I know I'm better at the swing one than I am at the deep pocket one. Blitz is better at the deep pocket one than at the swing one. So, like, to me, it doesn't look like his hit is happening at 10 o'clock because he's thinking about pulling in a straight line. When someone talks about pulling in a straight line, I want to pull my hair out because that idea that the line is a straight pull doesn't hold up to, like, 10 seconds of critical analysis. Blitz saved himself when he said that the disc is allowed to move one disc width and you will still call that a straight line because right even in his throw he gets to here and then as the disc comes out it rips out to his pocket so it does move like literally one disc width as it rips out of your hand 
So anyways, go check out his stuff. I'll put links to it. Let's take a look at what he is doing that works so well. Okay, so this is from Blitz's third video on the standstill tutorials, and I'll have a link to it. Um, so th this looks weird, right? <laughs> it's partway out of frame because it was just like a picture-in-picture -picture thing because he knows how to edit videos like a fancy person. Uh, I do not. But anyways, what he's doing here is a uh, experiment for science. So he's intentionally standing here where he can't use his hips, and then he's going to throw, and he says that he can, he can still get most, well, I mean, not like most of the, yeah, I guess most of the power in his throw, throwing like this. And it's because of one particular thing, I think. Hypothesis, totally unproven. And it's, it's that. Not many humans can get their shoulders back that far. So what, what pros usually go for in this position is getting their hips to a 45, which he's not quite on a 45 yet because he's intentionally locked his hips out. But his thoracic spine mobility, like that's the low part right here. That's the part where most of the twisting happens because your ribs can't really twist that much because they're too busy being ribs. But he can get his, it's kind of hard to see from this angle, but I've checked other throws of his where it, it's more of a chest on camera angle. And he's getting his shoulders about 45 degrees past square to the target. So he doesn't, he doesn't need his hips here because he has, you know, a really strong core because he's an athlete and a strength coach and he has exceptional mobility. So he has a lot of degrees you know, 45 to get back to 90 and then more than 90 to get back to his hit. So he's got, I don't know how math works, but that's more than 140 degrees of torque from his core. So you don't, you don't really need hips at that point. And this, this kind of like fits with my theory of that there's like eight or nine different places in the throw that you can really get a lot of power. And if you have at least two of them right then you can pretty much bomb. So like case in point, Brody Smith a year or two ago, like his brace wasn't doing him any favors, but he could still throw what, five or 600. So anyways, enough talk, more blitz. So here he is driving his shoulders forward and he's rotating well and his hit happens in a good spot. Like, so he's, he said he's, he's thinking about pulling in a straight line. Like, go watch his stuff, see what he's thinking. But he's thinking about pulling this disc in a straight line, getting it curled in well, getting his elbow pretty deep. And it's not a tight pocket, but it's, it's a deep pocket. And he's got his wrist curled in, too. I don't know if that's passive or active, but it doesn't matter because he throws far. So, but this is what I was talking about here, where like the disc is right here, and then one, two frames later, it's moved over a whole disc width. So Blitz is safe, he said that's a thing, but this that's why I don't like this straight line pull concept, is because it's not accurate. And and Blitz is, has gone into this a little bit, that like your hand is is continuing to press this way as you throw, but I'll leave that nuance to him because I can't throw like this. He's going to try to teach me, but I don't know how to do it. When I try to do deep pocket, it doesn't work. But when I try to do a swing, it does work. So we're like, we're kind of at an impasse of like, we just disagree on he thinks you should teach top down and I think you should teach bottom up. But in reality, they're probably both kind of true. And you should probably just teach everything at once and let someone choose what they want to do. But really cool like I want to say thought experiment but it's not a thought experiment because he tested it but you don't need hips turns out so yeah just I just want everyone to have all the information and be thinking and doing what's best for them and what Blitz is doing might be best for some people so go check his stuff out so yeah that's the video um, so go watch all of Blitz's stuff and then go to my Patreon and sign up and, and pay me. <laughs> Just kidding. Do whatever you want. But um, thanks to Blitz for a shout out to me. 
Um, here's one back. Um, and, like, he is a cool guy. He is a great coach. So if what, what I appreciate the most about this is that someone who is qualified in body mechanics is adding their ideas to the disc golf coaching sphere. That is what I want. Even if I don't agree with what they're doing, I think it's it's good on the whole. And I've already learned things from Blitz. Like I've learned that spine mobility matters more than I thought. And uh, he's kind of changed my mind on the straight line pull thing. That if, as long as you're continuing to power your hand like around this way, you can still get the rip out to work. And it's still going to be towards 10-ish. Like even though I'm thinking about like getting everything straight here at 10 and he's not, but it still kind of happens at 10 anyway. So anyways, there's some nuance about that, but go check out his stuff and we'll see you next time.